Hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to use the shatter effect in Adobe After Effects to create a cool digital image. So first I'm going to drag my image into the project panel. And you can use any image that you have. So my image is set at 6000 by 4000, so I'm actually going to keep those settings. So I'm just going to simply drag my image into the timeline panel. And then I'm just going to control right click the layer to rename it. And I'm just going to name it shatter. So next I'm just going to come over here to effects and presets and I'm going to search shatter and I'm just going to drag that into my comp. Now as you can see the image went away so make sure um, with your layer selected we're going to come up here to the shatter settings and under view we're going to select rendered. So now as you can see the image pops back up. Now when I go to composition, composition settings, you can see that it's set at the image setting 6000 by 4000. And since we're going to be doing image files, I'm going to leave it at one second and 29.9 frames per second. So when we export this out, it's going to create a image for each frame. So now let me show you what it looks like when I move my time ruler forward. So as you can see, the initial setting is, are these bricks that explode? And as it explodes, you can see that the background is transparent. So what I'm going to do is go to layer, new, solid, and just create a black background layer. And I'm going to keep all the settings the same. And now down here, I want to move my layer below the shatter layer. So now you can see the background is black. So now I'm not going to go through all of the shatter settings, but I am going to go through a few of them. So first, what we're going to do is go under shape. And as you can see under the pattern setting, there's several patterns that you can choose from. So I'm actually going to be working with the puzzle pattern. The next option is repetitions, which specifies the scale of the tile pattern. So if I bring up the repetitions, it's going to just add more puzzle pieces or whatever um, pattern you decided to work with. So I think I'll leave that at 10 for now. The direction just rotates the orientation of the preset shatter map. So we're just going to leave the direction at zero. And then the origin just um, precisely positions a preset shatter map on the layer, which I'm just going to leave at the current setting. And then extrusion depth just adds a uh, third dimension to the exploded pieces. So if I bring this up, you'll see that each puzzle piece, um, the depth is just more intense. So I'm just going to leave this at 0.20. Well, I might bring it up a little bit more. I think I'm going to set it at 0 0.30. And now what we're going to do is come down to the physics controls. Now rotation speed um, <clears throat> specifies the speed at which the pieces rotate. So as you can see, if I increase this, the pieces rotate out more. So I'm just going to leave this at 0 0.30. And then randomness just affects the initial velocities and spins generated by the force sphere. So as you can see, if I increase that, there's going to be more of a random explosion happening. And then uh, viscosity just specifies how fast pieces decelerate after being blown apart. And then the mass variance just specifies the theoretical weight of the pieces as they explode, which I'm just going to leave at 30%. And then gravity, that just determines what happens to the pieces as they break apart. So once the pieces are actually blown apart, the gravity, that's what is going to affect. So as you can see, if I move this, it's either going to go up or down. So I'm just going to leave this at 3 
And then lighting, there's a couple different lighting options. I'm just going to keep it at distance source. And I'm just going to scale my image up a little bit here. So as you can see, it's a pretty cool effect and it's pretty simple to do. So um, I'm going to show you now how to export this as an image file. So I'm going to come up here to File, Export, Add to Adobe Media Encoder. And right here under Options, you can either export it as a PNG or a JPEG file. So I'm just going to select PNG and I'm going to hit play so it starts to render. And just note that because we set it at one second, the duration at one second, that it's going to create 29 images because we set it at 29 frames per second. And that's it. Here are some of the final images. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.